once I fill out my data, I go to my email um, and you can see that the Xero team have sent me an email there. So I'm going to click on that, confirm your email address and it's uh, popped up and said, hi Heather, great to meet you. We'd like to make sure we got your email address light. Um, yes, it's me, let's get started. And I am going to create a password here. So the password uh, option comes up. It says create a password uh, with eight characters, including one or more number. So I've just created a password and made a note of it. And I click the blue button labeled activate your account. You're taken to the add your organization to start using Xero now window. Um, if you're using a global edition of Xero, this window may look a little different to this. As soon as you've activated your Xero account, you can set up your first organization in Xero. Enter the commonly used name of your business in this top field here. And in the next field down, select the country where the business is registered and pays business or company taxes. This selection will impact um, the entire file, so you really need to make sure you know um, what you're selecting here and select the correct um, country here. And it will also affect the zero subscription that you pay, whether you're paying the Australian version or New Zealand version, etc. At the time of recording this, Zero has customised solutions available for Australia, New Zealand, the United States and the United Kingdom. The Canadian version includes checks and there's a global edition that covers everything else. By selecting the country where your business is registered to pay taxes in the business location, you enable Xero to customise your package to suit your tax reporting requirements. For example, it reflects the consumer tax requirements of the location, that is maybe GST or VAT or PST, where a customised option is available. So I'm here in Australia and I will select Australia. The next field down is enter the time zone you're working in. Selecting a time zone in Xero customizes the date stamp, which is useful for maintaining an audit trail. Click on the drop down arrow here and select the closest location to where the business is registered to pay tax. One setting covers all users, no matter where they are located. Uh, and you can see here, um, Brisbane is there, but I will give you a tip if you do come in here, I think this works. If you just start typing in Brisbane, it will come up as well. Um, I tell you that because sometimes that list is very long to, to, to search for things on. The next field asks you to enter the type of business you're operating in. What does your organization do? So I will enter uh, consulting and a um, various options pop up um, and I'm going to select business consulting services. It asks me, are you registered for GST? And I've ticked the option, yes, calculate GST on transactions for me. That will be specific for Australia. For some countries, the Add Your Organization window also allows you to convert your existing accounting solution files into Xero. So if you're moving from another system, you can um, use these options. So if you were going to do that, you would select what your previous accounting software was here. There's a lot of different options and you would then select move from MYB or Reckon for free. They'll do that conversion for you free. And you'll go to a different screen where you would upload your file, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to click on the green start trial button now. If, however, I was very committed, I would click on the buy now button and that would start my zero subscription. But I get 30 days on the start trial button, so that's what I'm going to do. Choosing your trial or subscription option opens the Xero dashboard. At the top of the screen, you can see the Welcome to Xero block. There's a little hand waving and you can see a green line probably indicating how much of the Xero file has been set up. It tells you that businesses will run smoother and you'll get the most out of Xero by following these steps to get set up. And if you need help from a pro, you could click here, invite your accountant or bookkeeper. And I'll open that link to show you what happens. And uh, if we pop up here, you go into the invite a user section. And I'll just pop back to where I was. So that's where I opened up there. Or find a Xero certified advisor. And if I right click on that and open link in tab, 
that opens up to your Xero advisor directory. And here you can find an accountant or bookkeeper. And there I am. <laughs> and there's my friend Cassandra. So if you've started using Xero, you will find that there was this setup box here. Um, but I've decided to um, abandon it. And I'm just going to go you through and show you how to set up individual areas that I think are important for you. You may find some of the things that were set up in the box are slightly different to the way I explain it. Um, plus there's um, guidance in the help area. The important thing is to find the thing that's best for you and set it up that way. So let's look at setting up our organization settings. So I want to show you where to do that. So come across to your dashboard and click on settings. Click on um, general settings and under the organization, see there, organization heading, click organization settings. So business organization details, including organization names, um, type of business, contact details, and contact link can be entered in the organization settings dashboard. In this section, I'm going to complete most of the elements in this dashboard. During the sign up, um, we completed some of the information here. So we completed the display name and the legal trading name. In the display name field, you could enter your business name and this is typically the business name that Joe Public would refer to your business as and what appears within Xero. At the field legal trading name, um, this is the name that appears in documents produced by Xero. It may be long and clumsy name, may include terms like as trustee for or trading as. If you're a sole trader, your legal or trading name may be the same as your display name. If you're uncertain, check the business advisor who um, set up your business structure. So if we come down, it has here the option to upload a logo. The optimal size is a, um, a square image and it can be JPEG, uh, PNG or GIF. And it says 140 pixels by 140 pixels. Let's see if I, I think I have a square image I can upload. There, so I um, have just uploaded um, a, a simple image there. We filled out the information. Uh, what is your line of business um, during the setup process? And the next field is to select the organization type from the drop down list of options. The organization type field is optional and is for information purposes only. The selection makes no difference to your um, setup and can be changed at any time. There's a plethora of options there. I'm going to choose company. The Australian business number because I'm setting up an Australian business file. Enter your business's registration number as required in your region. Australian users need to enter their Australian business number and branch details if applicable. Branch details are relevant if you operate in more than one location. UK users need to enter their VAT registration number. New Zealand users need to enter their New Zealand business uh, number. United States global users have space to enter a business registration number. And United States users have um, space to enter an employer identification number if they need to record one. In the organization description field, uh, you can enter uh, organization description. So maybe a business that offers consulting and bookkeeping support, something like that. The next part of the organization settings dashboard is the contact details area. And this is quite straightforward. Simply enter your postal and physical address of your business. So the bar up the top here, the quick find bar, actually will search for things. So you can actually go 100 Queen Street and it will actually find the information and then auto populate it for you. I encourage you in the field here, attention, to put the name of, put your contact name in there. So I'll put my name in there. And if the postal address is the same as the physical address, you can just tick check that box there. But I'm going to pop down here. You can put your telephone number, email address and website here. And if you click on the drop down options here, you can add additional contact fields such as mobile, fax, direct line. This is for your direct line. Your Skype details. If you add your Skype details, you LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Google+. But uh, I'd highlight that to before adding uh, links within Xero to um, your, all your social networking sites that you're active on, you may want to consider your uh, business's social media strategy. You may want to just share your Facebook business page there. You might not want to add your personal details links there. 
these will populate in your online invoicing area and uh, once we get to that area once you set up your online invoices check that they are actually working so once you've added everything that you want to add there um, you can click the green save button and it will change to changes saved and you're still in the same area okay so there i have um, set up um, organization settings and um, it highlights up the top here you can include some of your information on the online invoices you send you can choose which details below um, and you could select on or off so if we so we've not put any details on there but select on and then you can come down the bottom here and select save it asks you to check the terms and conditions i've read the terms and conditions there and select save so that's uh, public facing that information. Excellent. So now we've set up organization settings.